Howdy folks, welcome to another day in the Milky Way, and it is Saturday. And of course, I've got two wonderful people here with me, which really needs no introduction, but I'm going to do it anyway. Mr. Robert V and the lovely Trina Phoenix. How y'all doing that? Wonderful. Really good. Really good. Robert's been out riding horses again today. Of course, another beautiful day in North Dakota. Ain't going to yeah. pass it up. <laughs> hey, it was a beautiful day here in Tennessee, too. So I've been out enjoying it as well. So, And, of course, Trina's out there in Phoenix, and it's just yeah. the armpit of hell out there. Yeah, but it was beautiful <laughs> and just under 100 degrees, and I was planting and working with my food garden, and it was beautiful. But it's, it's getting warm, and it's getting warm quick, and, oh, boy, it's going to be brutal, I think, this summer. It's May the 2nd, and you said just under 100 Oh, yeah, that's not bad. I've been in May before, <laughs> and it's already 113. So I'm like, no, this is good. <laughs> well, you can have it. Yeah. <laughs> that's all I got to say. What was the temps up there in North Dakota, did you say, Robert? Uh, I, I bet you it was probably about 70, 75 today, maybe, oh, something like that. Beautiful. But, that's yeah, we, we, don't, we, don't get, we don't get 100 very often. Uh, maybe, you know, if I, I think I may have seen it once, you know, but other than that, it's always cool and nice here, you know, it makes it hard to grow a garden though. <laughs> I remember when we had like a hundred and something days straight of over triple digit temperatures. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. It was, it was brutal. It was brutal. I think that year we hit like 122 degrees. Oh, registered geez. at the airports. Yeah. What's you, the you highest recorded temperature on the planet? 132 or 36, something like that? I think so. And I think we hit 127 once. So we're pretty close. Wow. Yeah. Uh, yeah. No. And, you know, it's a totally oh, different gosh. heat out there. It's that dry heat, no which is humidity. better. Yeah, yeah. The humidity here is what just kills you, man. Yeah. You just, that's what I was going to say. I can't handle the humidity because I'm not used to it, you know. So I, I really struggle with that. But yeah, we don't have any of that here. Hey, let me yeah, tell you, I've, you know, I've lived in it all my life and you don't ever get used to that's it. What I, that's what, yeah, I hear that. So, <laughs> you don't get used to it. No, oh, that humidity, it's so, it's, it's just makes you ring and wet. We got a lot, when I lived in Wisconsin, there was, you know, lots of that. And, and you just go, I changed my t-shirt like three, four times a day. Yeah. Like it's just humid. Ugh. The only time I've ever experienced that was we've gone to Mexico when it's been warm, and oh man, they have humidity down there, so it is a totally different ball game because it is super, super hot and it's super humid. I mean, you're like, oh, whoo, it's it's brutal. Hundred degrees with eighty percent humidity. Oh yeah, it's brutal. Wow. Mm, yep. Yeah. Oh, well, who knows if the way the weather is now, though? Yeah, it's getting crazy. <laughs> So yeah, every, everything's changing. It's all changing. <laughs> Indeed it is. I'm excited for the Simpsons episode tomorrow night. So folks, tune in. <laughs> I hope right. y'all caught That's up right. and watched last week's. Yep. You got your other the other half of that show. That's awesome. And if you haven't caught up, watch it, go watch it, fox.com. It's already there. I can't remember. It's called Kobe something, but check it out. It's pretty cool. And uh what else we got going? Oh, yeah. And tomorrow night, Trina and I'll be back with the the higher minds and Monday night trying to knock that out so we can get this telepathy rolling so stay tuned folks and i mean next week it's i've got even more coming so like i said i'm back to schedule and we got lots of good shows coming up i'm definitely going to be getting zigzag zill on because definitely he's definitely part of the family <laughs> no doubt about that speaking of the family let's see who we got with us real quick and then we'll we'll get her rolling all righty i didn't let it get too far behind tonight so we only got 21 with us so far there's Mr. Alex Fox, man. I want to get him back on here. Alex, please email me. I'm, that's that's the, the best way to make it happen, but I want to get you back on here. And if you don't want to do that one show about the numerology, we can do whatever you want to do. There's Miss Shannon Kling. What's going on? Shannon. Big Al. How you doing, buddy? There's Judith Nolan. She's my like nuts. You got to love her, boy. <laughs> <laughs> Who else? There's Delaney. Delaney, how you doing? Mr. Scratchy, what's going on? There's Debbie Bell. Good to see you. Miss Michelle Canham Free. I mean, I, I think I've known her probably besides Steve, and I've known her probably the longest on YouTube. We met yeah. on in the LM Network chat room. Wow. 
Jaway, how you doing? Good to see you. There's Miss Bridget Williams. I'm trying to talk her into getting on here too. Right on. Crystal MacArthur, nursing the kitty. Oh. Well, well, kitty, kitty. Pure love ascension. That's what we're after. There's Mr. Zigzagzilla. Zigzag. I'm telling you. <laughs> Political thinker 313. How you doing? Huh? Good to see you. There's Darth Samuel, the guy, and good to see you, buddy. Yeah. Who else is going on? Think Agape, love always and forever. And you know this. Miss Shauna D, how you doing tonight? Good to see you. Who else we got rolling? There's Miss Travel 444. Love, love, and more love to everyone. Ain't that the truth? That's what we're here for. Miss Mary Wins, there's my public relations department. <laughs> Mary. I got your size. I got one, uh -huh. one you want. I need your address. <laughs> Would I just send it to Mary Williams? <laughs> All right, who else we got? There's James Broom. Good to see you, buddy. Sue G, welcome back. Hi, Sue. Good to see you. Who else we got? There's David Castle. We need to get him back on here, too. Hit me up on an email, buddy. Who else we got rolling in here? There's Pa Joe, just in time. Good to see you. Celia and favor, in favor to all. All right, all right, all right. Party at the Moon Tower. Ann Allen just made it in time. What's going on? What are we talking about? Oh, we're going to talk about, I, I got a list here. <laughs> Uh-oh. Uh -oh. <laughs> we, got, we got a list. Okay. And, and in this time of uh, calamity that we're in, everybody seems to be living in fear. And we're going to talk about how I want your guys' ideas on fear. And uh, it cre fear creates energy. Okay. But it's the wrong kind of energy. Uh, it, it, it's, uh, you know, uh, but we spend so much of our time in fear over uh, you know, how much of your life is spent fearing something, you know, are you fearing driving to work that you're going to get in an accident? Are you fearing that you might lose your job? You're fearing you're not going to have enough money. You, you fear the dog that's going to bite you, you know, or the cat that's going to scratch your eyes out or, or something or the spider that comes down and crawls up your, your back or something. And look at the constant programming that comes at us too. It's all fear-based. It is. Yeah. Fear sells. You know, I mean, if you had program TV news about um, uh, uh, positive stuff, people would just turn it off and go, ah, I don't want to hear that. But, oh, my God, there was a tornado and there was 50 people killed. Let's all tune in and see what happened to them. <laughs> you know? Yep. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And so right now, the, the media is, is using food shortages. They're using the, the, you know, that virus thing. They're using all kinds of stuff to scare everybody. So how can we get rid of this fear? Ideas? Tune out. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Um, yeah. Bingo. <laughs> I mean, that's I'm talking about keep it simple, Brian. Well, like I said, I mean, you know, <laughs> I've really been mindful lately of what I allow in my reality. I mean, people send me videos and stuff, and, and as soon as I see a title, I don't like it. And, and no disrespect to the people that are sending me these videos. I just delete it, though. I don't even want to pay it no mind, no attention. Yeah. yeah that's like the and, most brilliant way to do this it's like you got to control what you're letting into your thoughts yep okay but but there's the but the, <laughs> there's always a but okay okay and 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 it's it, it's how uh, if how are you going to get rid of this fear and and change that into something that's non-fearful can you change the fear absolutely um, transmute it Yes, you can transmute it, but how do you do that? Well, there's can, you know, ways, different ways. Yeah. Okay, well, what, what are you gonna say, why don't Robert? you tell us, Robert? Okay, <laughs> there you go. I got it all wrote down. See my little handy dandy book here. It's all in my little, yeah, my little black book. Uh, anyway, um, how how can we change that? Uh, you can change it by knowledge. You you have knowledge of what you fear. And then you understand it. And instead of fearing that, you respect it instead. Okay. Like for me, I had a, a, a fear of cats. 
um, scratch your eyes out. They're terrible. They'll do all kinds of things to you, you know, blah, blah, blah. They're beady little eyes. I've kind of gotten over the fear of cats. I, you know, I'm good with them. I understand them. I don't fear them, but I respect them. You know, I leave them to their space and they, you know, I have my space, but I'm not going to go and cuddle with one. I'm not, not to that point, you know, but, but I respect them, you know. You're and, supposed to be good about seeing spirits and things like that too. Now, yeah, I'm a bad yeah, yeah, person. Yeah. I mean, I, I'll pet cats, but I'm allergic to long hair. So. Me too. Oh. Yeah. But, but I, I'm just saying, but that goes with all things. It, it, it's like, like what's going on now. If you know there's a food shortage coming, are you afraid of it? Well, who wouldn't be afraid of uh, starving to death? You know, <laughs> I mean, that, I, I, everybody needs food. There isn't one person out there and it doesn't need some kind of food, water, shelter, da, 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 da. So you need food. It's in that priority thing. So the thing is, is if you have knowledge of this and you respect it to get rid of the fear, buy some extra food stock up a little prepare ahead now your fear goes away because you know you're not going to starve to death yep. that's just one one small example that's that's my thought on on getting rid you turn it from from that uh uh, uh you know oh my god i'm we're all going to die and starve to death to hey i got plenty of the food in the house let's go on with normal life and well, now most it's positive of, most of our greatest fears like that there is like like Trina says keep it simple stupid it's usually got the simplest of solutions just by changing little things yes and the only way you can do that is if you have knowledge and you understand it uh but you have to like like you're saying about the videos and oh they're really negative but if you don't don't watch some of them and then look into that and study that a little bit you have to put in some work to understand it and then not let it get to you and then when you look at it you go oh and then you can you can blow it away that's how you get rid of that fear i don't want to watch it because i understand it now and that doesn't do that, that programming doesn't work on me no more and that well, works with anything well that's what like i've been saying you're the master of your thoughts you control what you let into your reality and what you're going to let affect you yes yeah, yeah. I, I like um, dealing uh, with fear um, in a couple different ways. And my first favorite way to always go at it is, is especially if you're getting ready to dive deep into trauma and things like that. Cause you know, a lot of people have like fears inside their body and it produces anxiety. It produces different symptoms. It's what and causes they the illness. Even, yeah. They don't have an awareness of what the trigger is though. It's like the body triggers and they really physically do not have any reason for this. So you know, fear can manifest on many levels in many different, in many different ways, but you know, it's false evidence appearing real. 90% of what we fear is something in the past that harmed us or a fear of anticipating not being safe in the future. So for me, like to find the key to get out of fear is to realize that you literally are a creator and, and you can choose what you manifest in your world. So like, there's a lot of things like eminent danger, you're in a car accident, you know, that's going to produce fear. You want that kind of fear because that's going to help keep you safe. So like, you can look at fear in a lot of different ways, but there, the, the best way to get out of fear is to look at it and, and not run from it. And, and like, like they were saying, knowledge and find a solution, take some action towards resolving it. And even the subconscious fears. When people yeah. go into their subconscious mind and face the monsters in the closet, usually it is so ridiculous in their current mental state that they're like, how could I have ever let that control my life to such a way when it absolutely has no power over me now, but it was still anchored in the subconscious mind. So it's like fears, fears tricky but there's many different ways that we can resolve our fears and face Absolutely. them. Yeah. Yeah. Heal them. Yes. Yeah. I mean, it, it, you said it exactly that it, once you face that fear, mm -hmm. it's, it becomes, you know, you, you kind of laugh at it in the end because it's mm -hmm. like, okay, so we're, we're going to talk about some of the things. And you said the number one thing people fear is death. Why, why do they fear death? Because their fear of, the pain it might cause them, the, yeah. uh, an unknown future. It's an unknown. And, yeah, and nobody can just call somebody up and say, hey, 
What's he died. Mean? How how was it? <laughs> <laughs> he died a couple of times. Uh, you know, why don't you just tell us about it? How did that feel? You know, and we'll we'll be good with that. <laughs> you know, I understand it now. No, but it it's unknown. It didn't happen to me. I can't just go through the process and come back and say, yeah, it was good. <laughs> and that's what I was going to say. That people fear what they don't understand. Yeah. Yes. So knowledge, I mean, well, well, knowledge, 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 knowledge. Wayne's always saying that. Hey, when I get to the other side, power. I want to be prepared. I want to be prepared. I'm gonna, I'm gonna know what to do. I'm gonna have knowledge, and I can carry that with me. You know, I ain't afraid to go and blah blah blah. You know, and he goes on and on. You've all heard it, so I don't have to repeat it. But the thing <laughs> is, is he's going in with a bunch of knowledge. He's not going to be scared. He's going to be prepared. And life, uh, you know, uh, here isn't it that that part is not a fear for him and i don't think i think that's what we're all trying to do is negotiate that fear get the knowledge and then respect that to the point where you know okay we're just going to make a transition now you know i will say that's one advantage i have you know with my life you know i've basically put myself through hell and back i honestly don't have any fear on anything death or anything i mean Right. whatever will be will be I, i'm ready for it yeah but most people get stuck in fear it, it's basically a program it literally is a program because think about it we're, we don't die i mean we lose our flesh but we we don't die and i think like wayne he's not afraid of it now because he has an understanding that when he drops his flesh now that he's astral traveling and getting out of his body, he's like, it's going to be just like that. And he's right. <laughs> mm -hmm. So he's not scared anymore. Exactly. Because he understands. He, he did the research. He did the work. He has the knowledge. And, mm -hmm. and, and now it's easy. And it's yeah. better. And he's lived that life as well. Yes. Yes. <laughs> and, and that can go with anything. So like you said, experience. Yes. It, it, like I said, exactly. yeah, I yeah, think, you, as, you know, being in the Christian background for all those years and that puts so much fear into you from the heaven and hell concepts. Oh man. So many people are so, even I sometimes, you know, fall back into those old programs okay. and it's like, hold the phone. Those that aren't means, even, you know, they are living it. Yeah. And, and being told it over and over and yeah. over again. You yeah. Know? Yeah. It's a, it's yeah. the repetition. It's that programming. It's the, yeah. the, uh, well, well, let's just put it before there was TV. That was the original programming. And, yeah. and, and it would, would it not be, I mean, you couldn't yeah. have TV programming. So you went, uh, you, they made sure everybody went to church, mm -hmm. uh, you know, picked the religion, went to church and, and they all got programmed. The preacher's up there telling mm -hmm. them, here's the program. This is what we're doing. This is how it is. Uh, you know, if you can't read, I'll tell you what it says. And this and, is and, why it says. <laughs> and we're used to letting that, that media and things control our emotions. It's just yeah. autopilot for us because we've been indoctrinated in it so long. Yeah, yeah, and then and then they transferred it to the schools, the 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 TV, the churches. Everybody's putting in their little two cents worth of programming. And the thing is, is even I I don't want to be picking on the the, the churches so much because the preachers themselves have been indoctrinated to the point where. I don't even know if they know what the truth is. They just been indoctrinated too. Yeah. So they're just spewing the same thing because the guy before them told them and the guy before him told him and him and so forth down the line. And so far gone that who know who, do you, does anybody really know what the truth is? No. no, I mean, they truly believe that they're preaching the correct thing. Yeah. But you Remember, have to, to praise something out there, but no, no, no. It, it, it's well, right exactly. Here. Exactly. But here's the thing whenever you would ask a question or at least any time I ever did, and you probably got the same answer, they would just tell you, Oh, don't worry. God wrote the Bible. Just have faith and believe it's true. Go away now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Or they'd say, don't ask me that again. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't go very many times, but I went to this one church and I was asking my aunt questions and, and she was the first time she ever took me with her. And, and I got that. Don't ever ask me that again. 
Oh, good answer, right? I want to. I want to go right back. <laughs> yeah, I didn't go very often, and then I went a few times. And I got in trouble. It's like, oh yeah, I think I should go back there. <laughs> Stop that lady at the door! Don't let her in. <laughs> well, let me tell you, you should come to and, one like yeah, my grandmother I goes to. Not to, so you know, it's like you should just follow what you know. <laughs> Trina, you should go to one like my grandmother goes to, where they run up and down the aisle speaking in tongues. That's what was happening at this one, and I'd never seen that before. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Freaked me out when I was a kid. Me too. It scared the crap out of me. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't know any of that stuff existed. And literally, we walked up to this church, and these palm trees were all crazy, and they were all twisted. I should have known just by the palm trees. <laughs> you should know, like, there's some weird energy here. <laughs> <laughs> this place is twisted literally I, I was traumatized i really was I, I didn't even know people like you know it looked like they were possessed by demons i thought they needed medical attention i did not let, let me tell you i truly believe that when those people are speaking in tongue they are under a yeah, possession I, I, yeah, at that time. yeah i must say i would agree <laughs> with that but that is possession <laughs> And then, yes. and both, yeah, yeah, they were going. saying in different languages and oh my goodness it was the craziest thing i ever saw in my life and i had no exposure to this and i went to some big event and it was not <laughs> good for me <laughs> now, now can you imagine some you know being a oh, child or a younger person going to that church and seeing that the fear that you the you know would traumatize you and That's then you'd be like I was yeah. that child. Yeah, that's yeah, you were that child. But, yeah. but, but you, you see where it's going with that. It's like yeah. you remember that forever. Yeah. And I'll never then, forget it. No, yeah, yeah, I'll never forget it. Uh-uh. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. And yeah. uh <laughs> yeah, it's and that and that's the point. That's the whole thing. And it's like now that you you, you realize that and you look at it and you go, that was just stupid. They were really possessed by something, but yeah. it wasn't what I, you know they were thinking it was. Well, like <laughs> no. I said, I'm very empathic, and I've always been very sensitive to energies that other people weren't able to pick up around me, especially in the '70s. People, they no, they didn't have any clue. And I was talking to the Lord every day, seeing spirits. My house was haunted. You know, I had a lot of stuff going on with that kind of stuff. So when I went to that place and I was, I felt those energies, whoa, it traumatized me because I could feel the darkness in it. Oh, I'm it, scary, it, it really scared me. Yeah, it really scared me. And I was really concerned for my hand. I was like, are you sure this is okay? And, you know, she's like, don't ask me that again. Because I understand a lot of people, that's really a wonderful part of their religion. But for me, as a child, never exposed to any of it, walk in on that whoa hold the phone it was traumatizing no i'm telling you i'm super empathic i mean i you know that's what i've told you before feeling all those energies of people coming in I, when i started doing these shows i didn't know what was going on you know and shoot i feel energies of people on the other side of the planet and stuff like it's like yeah. i said it, it's a gift and a curse yeah yeah you're right it took me a long time to process the energies from the shows and still even sometimes <laughs> it, it, it's still the same and it's just like the other day when you and I talked, that energy hit us. And uh, oh, I get jacked okay. up after these shows, like all this energy coming yeah. at you. I mean, uh, Robert, I don't know if you've noticed the difference, but I'm telling you, like, man, you feel this energy from all the people that's in the chat room and oh, stuff. Yeah. Yeah, I'll be right yeah, back. That's... I'm turning the fan on because literally I'm over here. <laughs> Getting okay, hot well, and hotter over she's... Why, why she's doing that uh, i'll tell you okay so you're right the energy so i in the chat room a lot of times people are saying this is such a wonderful chat room it's it just uh, you know uh fills me up it's great i can't i i just love this everybody's so friendly yada 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 and mm -hmm. then i was doing some little research on on the fear thing and mm -hmm. fear is energy and so mm -hmm. okay so you're getting we're going to imagine now just imagine in your head there's you got that cup of that glass of water and it's it's you know half full or it's full or whatever but a lot of that is it, you got a glass full of water and it's mostly fear 
from all these things in your life, you know, your job, the boss yelling at you, not being able to pay your bills, food, the, the, the programming, all these things, the church, whatever you were, you know, going through your head, boom, boom, boom. Now you're going to get, you're going to work on getting rid of your fear, get rid of that fear. And when you get rid of that fear, guess what? You pour out the glass. Now the glass is empty. Now you have an empty glass, fill it up. What are you going to fill it up with? You fill it up with love. Love is the better vibration. And when you <laughs> fill that glass up with love, then you won't have the fear in the, you know, you see where, see where I'm going with this is a metaphor. Oh, and, yeah. and, and I see this in the chat room. People are like, yeah, I love coming here. And I, and just like you're saying, yeah, I get here and it just, it's just pumping in. Okay, so you 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 just told me a few minutes ago. I, I don't have any fear. I, I'm getting rid of my fear. Blah blah blah. Well, your glass is now filling up with this love. People are pouring into it. You, yep. you get where I'm going with? And no, so I, now feel you're feeling... I, I concur a hundred percent. That I mean, I'm full of love, and I, I I get the love every day. I'm humbled by it. So yes, yeah. yes. Isn't and it, isn't it amazing too how it seems like um. You know, it's it's like the law of attraction really does work. Mm -hmm. What well, you know, it's like I've watched you with your meditation, and and I watched you transform so much, Brian, and it's just mind blowing to see it. And it's like that's it's it's like it boils down to this. It's like how disciplined can we be in our own minds to not allow these that's programs the to consume us because they literally just trigger you. And sometimes you're like, where'd that come from? <laughs> you know what well, literally you're like where did that come from but um those are beautiful opportunities to say thank you for showing my fear absolutely mm -hmm. yeah like, yeah but, not, it out. but now when you get full your glass gets full and mm -hmm. uh, and I'll I'll use Brian as example because you know he he's just in the thick of it so right. Brian your <laughs> glass is getting full everybody's pouring the love in you know, and I can see it. I, I bet you in the chat room, they're just saying, we love you, Brian. We love you. <laughs> you know? So see, they're filling it up. And yep. when it gets full, you're spreading it out because it, you got to you got to keep the, you got to keep that glass. And if it fills up, you know, it stops. So you yep. want to pour that out and you want to spread the love, which you usually do. You're you know, that's just that's who right. you are, you know. And so you spread that out and they keep pouring it in. And that's that's the better part of it because now you can't fill it up with the fear you keep pouring it out now you're giving it away you're giving it to the other people so now you're filling up other people's glasses full of love and they're dumping their fear out and that's what i want that's my message today is to try to get everybody to realize that get rid of the fear dump the love in and have a full glass and spread it out to everybody else that's those ripples in the universe i'm talking about that's why i want everybody <laughs> to cast them out yeah. That, there there you go yeah exactly. you know it, it's like that exchange too it's like you know when the spirit moves you and fills you and gives you these beautiful frequencies and and like when we're meditating connecting with the earth and we're, we're angry and and receiving these beautiful gifts of frequency and then small acts of kindness start to manifest in your world like as soon as those things start to happen reciprocate give back give back that which was given to you immediately try find it i mean it'll present itself but you don't give until it hurts that's it we'll just do it. the more you can give it away the faster it'll come you back tenfold fill back up right <laughs> so it, come back tenfold. Yeah, yeah exactly so it's like so much of us we've been so programmed to be separate and, and we got to try to survive and we got to try to earn a living and you know it's all about you're doing it all on your own. There's nobody going to support you. You need to take care of yourself. There's all of these programs and it's all based on fear over safety. So if we literally started to look at the way when, 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 when we give to each other, it, it fills you up to such a level where you literally become more abundant through it and through giving to others they are receiving and then they can give and and this is how the world literally would change if we mm -hmm. wanted to. it would be yeah. through that act yes it's so yeah. simple <laughs> exactly but fill the, up and give it all away 
fill up again, give it all away. <laughs> you know, like I said, it don't take long to fill it back up. No, you know, me and just come on here and do a show with me. I promise I'll fill your love truck up. Right. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. See, now, doesn't that make sense? Just by, by you know, that little bit, it just, it's so good because everybody's, you know, and like you said, you're, you're, you, you change the world that way. Mm -hmm. Trina's right. You change the world that way. Why the programmers themselves are, are kind of constantly putting in the fear, <laughs> fear, fear and keeping people in that mindset of, oh my God, I can't leave my house. I, I got to stay here. Well, people mm -hmm. need people. That's the thing. People need contact with other people. They need yeah. to interact, uh, you know, and we, and not even just interact like on the computer or on a phone. They need real people. Yeah. Yes. Contact. Yeah. We and need people contact too, not just screen. Yes. Time. Yes. Yeah. Yes. And, and, you know, so say hi to your neighbor. Um, yeah. You know, wave. When you go down the road, wave at the guy, you know, and then the guy going down the road, the guy drives by, wave to him. Just, oh, just you're like me. You live out in the country. I wave to everybody. I pass. <laughs> I do it in the city and sometimes I get the you're crazy loco look oh, on I get it all the time oh. yeah but I mean most of the time you can tell because I am in more of a city I think it's even more needed here like I said I'm one of those people in grocery store literally almost everybody I pass I, I say hello make eye contact do something like I said spark up conversations mm -hmm. I, I like to walk the walk and talk to talk people get out yep. there yep <laughs> And even if you don't speak, all you have to do is smile. Just kind of get, just, yeah, open just the door smile. for somebody, anything. Yeah. Be kind. I mean, yeah, it's amazing. Like the, the smallest things. I've, I've done stuff like that where intentionally, like, you know, I'm going to be extra courteous with driving and let people in and, and do these courteous things. And it's so funny, literally just to set that intention and to do that like one or two times in say like an hour long drive like 15 minutes into the drive all the favor starts already coming back your way it's it, contagious yeah yeah and it's like it's proven if you give it away it returns super fast so you never have to worry about giving too much of it away just keep giving it because it's bringing more into the world and you, you're going to receive more so if you're giving out favor like wayne he's being bathed in favor right now mm -hmm. yeah yep. It's the way it works. And like you said, once you start doing it, you'll see it start happening around you. The other cars will start letting people in. And yes. Like, That's what I mean. It, it literally, I think this is how we truly have to focus on fixing our world. It's going to be through taking care of each other and, and actually really putting forth an effort to try to support each other because, yeah. you know, everything's been taught about, you know, just me, selfish, you know, achievement. It's yeah. all been about to keep us separate. It's not about yeah. unifying us and taking care of each other. Yeah. This, this right now is the time to do it because, yeah. um, because of the situation everybody's in. Everybody's yeah. in this weird situation and they don't know what to do. And this is the time that we need to go out and do that more than ever. Because once you hit that magical 10% number, that's when the, the mm -hmm. numbers start. Yeah, when the numbers that hits, that's when the numbers start to flip and everything starts to change. But until you hit that, you know, it's really hard to rock the boat. Um, but it's a proven fact. You got to have, you know, X amount of percent. And then it just, it's like a big wave. To be and, honest uh, with you, I think that's why you're, we're literally seeing these changing timelines. Yeah. Because we're literally changing these timelines because this is a movement right now. Oh, yeah. it's even more the reason get out there and shout it even louder. <laughs> right. Yes. Yes. Absolutely. Well, and that's why these guys, it's so hard to predict the future is because everybody's like, oh yeah, this is going to happen. That's going to happen. Blah, blah, blah. And this date and that date. Well, you know, so, and that's fine. If you're in, if you're in the present right now and you're predicting, you know, X amount of days ahead of time, well, you know, whatever time it is. If you're predicting that and, and, and somebody or like us, we all get together and we do something and we wave at somebody and we start, you know, spreading the love and sharing the things and start people being positive, that thing there gets put off to later or it doesn't happen at all. 
and yeah. the timeline changes. And that guy was like predicting, and hey, you know what didn't happen? Well, good. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know. Yeah. I, I I see the timelines are all based on like um vibration. So yeah, that's why I think we have the ability to jump. It's kind of like, you know, like some days you're in a bad mood. It's it's because you're on a different timeline and you might've been on a, a higher timeline in the past four days. And then for whatever reason it shifted and now you're in a denser timeline, but everything looks so similar. You don't even notice it's shifted. So I, I think we're doing this all the time and we're just not really aware of it. Well, you know, like I was saying, the ripples out in the universe before we were putting those ripples out. I think literally now we're over here stomping in the kiddie pool. Mm. <laughs> you know, we're putting waves out now. Yeah, 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 yeah exactly, yeah. exactly. But I, I, I'm thinking it's catching on faster because of the, you know, it's kind of backfiring because people are out there looking now for a change and yeah. they see it's blatantly playing that things are going to change and it's they don't like it. Well, you know, they thought this was going to keep people in and scared, and then it backfired on him. Trina and I have talked about that. People started, like I said, getting creative, doing music, getting you know, getting together. This this yeah. has backfired, Robert. You're Lucid dreaming, back. like crazy dreams, broken sleep. Yeah, all these things. All it's changed all the. They tried to drive a wedge, but it's actually in a lot of cases brought people together. And, and you know, and I've said before, most other people yeah. don't know, but we know that. We don't really have to be together physically. We can connect mentally. Yes. Yes. It, and, this and is, it, it's an awakening. I, I mean, a mass level awakening. Yeah. People yeah. are, they're looking outside of what they've always looked at because right now nothing looks the way it always has. Right. So it's kind of forcing them to say, what's really going on here? And through that, a lot of people are really waking up right now. And, and guys, say a prayer for him because, man, could you imagine waking up right now how difficult that would be? Mm. Now, yeah, that's what I've said before. If you didn't realize what you were going through, no no wonder so many people are going crazy and things. Yes. Like, if I didn't yeah. know what I was going through, I'd be like, what the hell? <laughs> right. Yeah. And, but you this know, is... think about it. If you're just in your own little bubble, you know, you're married, you got your kids, you got your life, you're doing, you know, whatever you're doing. And it's just your reality. And you know nothing of any of this stuff. The world yeah. stops, a virus hits. Maybe, you know, maybe there's no income in the home anymore. It's an utter crisis for mm -hmm. some people. Mm -hmm. and, and, and in those times of utter crisis, that's when sometimes, I hate to say it, we see the most profound growth in humans. Yep. Yeah. So but but, but they, you're right. They, you, when they're grow, but when they wake up, like Brian says, they're waking up and you don't know what to do. Trina, you're right. They're growing. But now is the time to to like um, give that person the information or steer them into the positive direction, because yes. at the same time, they're at a crossroads. Now, am I right, right yeah. around here? It, they're at this crossroads. They can go to the left or they can go to the right. They got the, the fear and guilt control matrix over here and they don't know the difference. They just know that there's a path here and I'm in the middle of the crossroads. I have to make a decision left or right. And if you're there and you, you, you give them some positive and some love or, or like you said, wave to them or something, that could be the change that they need to take the, the road to, to, the, to the love path instead of the road to the fear path. Just that much. Yeah. Am I right? Wrong. Yeah. No, absolutely. Yeah, it really can. So it really uh, can. Yeah, yeah. Just a little, little nudge. Just it just made push. me think of a of a story when I was um, younger in, in my college years. Um, I was one of the popular kids, and I always had a very strong intuition. <laughs> oh, I did. I had a strong intuition. I, you know, I lived in the same area my whole life too. That kind of helps. But um. I, one day there was a kid that I saw in the hallway and I literally looked at him. I said, Hey, you're all right. And he just looked at me and I says, have a good day. And he, you know, he wrote me a letter a few months later and he, he, he says, he says, Hey, and I says, what? He says, I got something for you. And he handed me a note. And I was like, interesting. He told me that he was going to kill himself that day after school, but because I said hi to him, he didn't. 
that's what I, I've always it's said. Crazy uh, little you know, things that you don't realize the effect that you have sometimes. And that's why I do it. Like when I, I'm out at the grocery store and things like that, a simple smile, a hello, just you never know how much it can change somebody's day. Yes. Yeah. Absolutely. Trina, you change that timeline. You change the timeline. Yeah. <laughs> it's day. weird too. I've called people too when they were in that place and I just hadn't talked to them in months and I just knew to call. Like for some, I, I like I get the radar. I don't know how, but I do. Oh, that's like when my dad committed suicide. My mom came down like to tell me nobody had told me. And as soon as she walked in the door, she was like, I got something to tell you. I already knew. You I was knew. Like, my dad's dead. And, and, and I knew it was suicide. You know, like I said, I'd, I'd talked to him the day before. You just, you, it's that sense of knowing, you know, and plus that connection to, I guess, being broken. So, yeah. 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 yeah, it's amazing, though. It's like I said. We don't realize how much we need each other, you know, and, and, and it's so important that we, we do try to love each other and support each other and follow your intuition. If, if you're getting a nudge about something, y'all pay attention. It's probably right. Yeah. And like, yeah. like we keep saying, you're not alone in this community. There's anybody yeah. that's in this chat room right now or, or any one of us. Yeah. We're here for you. I, I promise you. <laughs> We've got time and an open ear. Absolutely. And it's so much of us have been through so much of the same, you know, and so much of us have had so many different journeys, but it's like within the community, most of us all have a lot in common. That's what I'm saying. Somebody in the community would be able to relate to about anything yeah. anybody's been through. Like up close and personal. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it's nice too, because it's just nice to make a connection uh, with people. You know, I've put my ad email address in there several times, you know, and I've talked to Jawe before, you know, on, on, on email, sent him a few and, you mm -hmm. know, things like that. And that was good. You know, it was like, woohoo, you know, somebody to, to send them and say, hey, how you doing? You know, how's, how's things yeah. up that way? It's just yeah. nice, uh, you know. Uh, somebody new, uh, somebody different. Uh, and, and then maybe, you know, who knows where, what, what difference that makes, you know, it's, it, but it was good. It was a good feeling and yeah. uh, shout out to him. So, Hey, <laughs> yeah, he's here too. <laughs> I wonder if he would ever come on and do a show. I, uh, you have to ask him. Jawway, if you want to do a show, Milky Way Weekly at Gmail. Hit me up. Right on. <laughs> so what's next on the notes, Robert? Oh, well, you know, I say that, you know, we're, we're talking about the big things. Um, we, we're talking about, you know, death and all these other things. But most people, uh, you got to start somewhere. You know, start with, you know, people, uh, the things they fear, snakes, cats, spiders, dogs, thunderstorms, mice, poisons, plants, government, job loss, love loss, money. Start with the small things. You're mm -hmm. afraid of mice? Look up mice. Uh, find out what they're all about. You know what? That little bitty mouse, it's not deadly. You know, yeah, I've seen women, they scream and yell and run the other way. I've seen guys do it, too. <laughs> well, let but, me ask you, you know, like, say spiders. You yeah, know, I almost I, lost I my foot because of a brown recluse. Literally, like, they almost cut my foot off. Yeah, so, yeah. How do I get well, over that? Yeah, well. You're not supposed to get out over that. <laughs> you're supposed to be scared of a brown recluse spider. I that, am. That's right. <laughs> You don't fear. Well, I mean, I yeah, don't fear them. I just don't like them. I well, mean, yeah, well, <laughs> I'm sure I, I don't like them either, but don't you get the knowledge on the, the, the spider. Understand the spider. Oh, I, I, then, I understand them. I did a lot of research on them. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. And after you did the research, did you feel better? Well, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. I take my and, sheets every time, too. Exactly. Exactly. Uh, and when you uh, you understand it and then you respect the spider. Yeah, it's yeah. deadly. It could hurt me. I could lose a foot, a leg, a limb, whatever. I could actually die. So when I see one, I'm going to check my boot. I'm going to do what I have to do. Um, and then I will be safe. 
but that's i'm thinking the precaution but that's the thing understand what you uh but because if you don't understand here i'll tell you a little story i went down to see my sister she lives in arkansas and there was uh, uh they got them copper heads or you probably got them oh, there yeah, we got them. copper heads and they got uh, rattlesnakes and well i was there and uh, we don't have that kind of stuff up here. I think there's some uh, rattlesnakes. You got rattlesnakes up there, because trust me, yeah. I've seen them up there. <laughs> yeah, but, but you very seldom see them. So, uh, you know, and there's no copperheads. And I'm not afraid to put my hand under a rock and dig around because there's probably not nothing there. Uh, but in Arkansas, they're slithering all over the place. Oh, and, yeah. and uh, you know, like at night we're walking around and they seen one and it's like, oh my gosh, here goes a copperhead. And they're out there with the shovel, you know, whacking it in the head, you know, and then they're like, oh, we got to chop the head off because, you know. It'll still bite you. Yeah, you it'll still, exactly. Even after thinking, you chop it off. Yeah, you can't touch yeah. them out. They'll bite you still. Yeah. 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 Even well, when I, your head's off. Yeah. And this this is how um I was not fearful of the snake because I did not understand the snake. Right. You can relate the snake as a metaphor for the things that are going on in the world right now. So I didn't understand the snake. I just seen a snake. Now I'm not afraid of snakes because I've never really had to deal with a poisonous snake. Um, so I wasn't fearful of it they were all crazy over the snake <laughs> running around clunking it in the head chopping the head off we're gonna bury it in the ground we gotta bury the head we gotta bury the head because you know it'll still bite you and then you could die and you know and they're going on and on and i'm like why and i'm going up there with my boot and i'm kind of kicking get away get away <laughs> you know and i'm like why you know well because i didn't understand the snake no. i didn't i i just knew it was a copperhead well what's so bad about it well, you know, once I got informed, then I was a little more, oh, holy cow, you know, what was I doing? I was playing with dynamite here <laughs> and the wick clip, you know, the, the thing was lit and I'm holding it going, woo, it's pretty candle, isn't it? No, I, I'm, I'm saying I, I didn't understand it. So the thing is, is once I understood it, now I'm respectful of it instead of kicking it with my boot and saying, oh, pretty snake. Can I pick it up? <laughs> that's what I, I, I probably would have picked it up. <laughs> because <laughs> that's what i like to do i like to grab them you know and do the the crocodile guy whatever his name is you know you better get to the hospital within an hour <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but see i i didn't know i was unknowledgeable i've never had to deal with those things before but now i, I would uh think twice you know now a rattlesnake i would be like oh yeah yeah i know a rattlesnake but i don't know anything about copperhead or nothing so so that is the thing about fear if you don't understand what it is or or don't even uh, know what it is you, you're going to be ignorant to it so the big thing is is get the knowledge understand the world you live in so you can navigate through it otherwise you won't navigate <laughs> see just like you were saying and that even shows two different types of fear you didn't fear it because you've not been around poisonous snakes snakes and much and like i've said a lot of people, their biggest fears is what they don't understand. So yeah. there's different levels of understanding there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, so my, my thought is, is just learn, learn, yep. you know, and like you did about the spider, you learned about the spider. You don't fear it so much. Uh, you know, there's other, but like, look, there's little things. Yeah. Spiders, snakes, you know, a dog, cats. I, I was afraid of cats for the longest time, but now I understand them. You know, things like that. Uh, they, they, maybe they're not going to scratch my eyes out, but I, I'm not going to grab one and pet it out and be all cuddly with it. You know, it's just. Do you have a reason for that fear of cats? No, it's pretty uh, stupid. Well, you, you won't believe it if I told you. <laughs> no, I would because oh, I have dude. literally, I have a cousin <laughs> in Italy who is literally completely terrified of cats. I mean, will freak out. <laughs> she was literally attacked when she was a child by a cat and it was bad. Oh, I know when I was a little kid, we had a cat, but somehow or another that cat ran away and we never had cats again, but there was a lady up the road from us. Her name was Harriet and uh, we'd go up there once in a while and she had like 150 cats living in the house with her yep. and oh uh, <laughs> yeah, and then she had, she had a dog too. She had a big German Shepherd dog. And uh, we went up there to visit her. She was just, she was an old lady. Well, she died. Um, and 
nobody came to visit her, which I feel really bad for, you know, and now, I mean, I think, oh man, you know, so nobody came and the cats got hungry and they ate her. <laughs> oh yeah. And the dog didn't eat her, but the cats ate her. And uh, after that, that kind of grossed me out and I just didn't like cats. I thought, oh, you know, what kind of pet would eat you? You know, yeah. that's, that's just rotten. That's horrible. I, I didn't sad. after that. I just didn't like that with the, the cats and the That's thing. a good reason. That's yeah, a real there, good there you reason. Go. Yeah. <laughs> real good reason. Because, yeah, when you, when you process that when you were little, it was like, whoa, that's not okay. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, like I said, my cousin, her fear of cats, it's definitely justified. Definitely. So yours seems to be too. But, you know, it's so funny. When you, when uh, I've seen people who have traumas of, like, water snakes uh spiders and stuff but they have no they're like i don't know where it comes from there's no reason you know mm -hmm. there's no rationale behind this fear those are interesting because you can take people into the mind and find out what why they are afraid of it and wow when they realize the story that's behind that uh, phobia it, it literally wipes it out immediately and it's gone and, and you could like throw a spider at them and they'd be like, whoa, because it's a spider, but they wouldn't be like, couldn't breathe for an hour afterwards. You know, it's a completely yeah. different, it's, it's a natural, normal response to something that could potentially harm you, but there's no trauma with it. And, and when it's away, there's no more trauma. It's gone. Do you, do you so, find that a lot of these memories are suppressed or is it most things that they, it sticks with them? I've seen it, uh, suppressed memories, uh, trauma that they forgot about as a child that they're, you know, they disassociated. Yep. And then some of the most incredible ones I've seen have been from past life cellular memory. Mm. So all it right. goes all the way back in the timeline sometimes, because I've had a client who had a crazy fear of water. She was on one of the boats, um, when people were coming from England to the Americas and she drowned on the boat. And then when she saw it, she understood why she was so scared of the ocean and why she was so scared of the water. And, and it totally made sense. And then she was completely free of the phobia. It didn't bother her anymore on any level. You know, I really need to get with Desert Rose again or somebody that does past life readings because, man, when I did that, you know, with Desert Rose, like, I cannot find those notes anywhere. And I, I just can't remember. Like, I, I'd, I'd love to get that information. I mean, and, and I was like... Out of like nine lies that she'd got for me, I think I was a woman like three or four of them. So, but I, you know, yeah. I grew up around women, so that makes sense. Mm -hmm. so. Absolutely. So, Trina, most of those uh, uh, suppressions, those are from, you know, they suppress most stuff because of trauma, or is it just other, uh, you no, know, like, um, just like if, because of trauma? Well, like, like they'll have a phobia and they won't know where it's coming from. So, there's yeah. no rational experience that they can identify that would have given them this extreme fear because i mean phobias are like they can't function you, you yeah. don't play with that you know so when when these phobias would come up if people had no knowledge of where this could have come from that's when you do like a process where you do like a guided meditation and take them into memories and right. and and you can retrieve these memories and it doesn't matter where they're from it can be past life it can be when they were a little infant it don't matter because you still can recall these memories it's just a matter of pulling them up and putting them up on a screen where you can see them and view them and then when you do this through this process you're, you're viewing the event and you can keep the person who's viewing the event conscious that they're only viewing the event so they can't get the emotional charge and if they start to get emotional say just remember you're just viewing this it's not happening now and I'm telling yeah. you, that's why it even makes more sense that we live in a holographic real reality because all those timelines are existing and happening at the same time, no matter where yeah. it may be in time. Yes. Yeah. Yes. So you, you got to work through your trauma see. and your buried trauma, that stuff that's in you that you may not even have an awareness of. That's why you can go access it. And like you said, you can transmute that. But I'm telling you, for some reason, that's with me, yeah, that's... Uh, that's right now it's time we're, we need to be collecting these fragments. We're, yes. we're supposed to be gathering them right now. Go and solve those problems, gather it, bring it back. You're supposed to be gathering those fragments right now. I, I, wonder, too, I, believe. 
I wonder yeah. if the fragments are actually created by trauma. I, I've wondered that for a while now. Yeah, hmm. that could that could be. And then once you get those fragments uh, um, settled out or squared away, you can move on. No. Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, I because I, I think a lot of us that are born right now <laughs> in this reality. I, I, it seems that many of us have connections to Atlantis and Atlantean times and um, ancient past. And it, it's like, when you start to get, remember parts of these experiences in your consciousness, the first thing that happens is you, you, you realize that you've done this before. And, and, and through that, you, you kind of realize that death isn't permanent. So that that's a huge revelation in its own for people that go into their mind and go into their own layers of their own consciousness, because it truly validates that they have been before. That's why I have no fear of death at all, because I truly know, shit, I can't wait to be, I mean, I ain't going to force the issue, but like, right, I'm right. excited to see what it brings, because I know, and you know, that's what I'm saying, I'm picking up those pieces. Okay. Yeah, but see, see, you you said you died before, so you know, and, and I noticed uh, that there was another guy I met, uh, and he was telling me that he'd passed on, and he went to the other side, and he's going to give me an interview, and I'm going to videotape oh. it, and do that, post it on my channel one of these days. But then he was telling me that uh, you know now that that it's already happened, oh he. he he don't mind if it happens again, he's good to go, you know, yeah. uh, uh, you know, he says it was so nice on the other side and he had family members and stuff. And then he says, well, it's not your time. Go back, blah, blah, blah. And, uh, he says, but he says now, now that he kind of knows what it's like, he doesn't fear death no more. He's like, oh, well, you know, it's, if it happens, it happens. I know it's good on the other side. Well, see, I, I didn't see no lights or nothing. I mean, literally I, I blacked out was on, you know, had the heart attack and then they revived me. And the only thing I, I just woke up in the hospital after the sedation wore off. So like, I didn't see no lights, but after that, you know, I, like I said, going into it, I wasn't scared at all until the preacher started praying over me. And that's what freaked me out. <laughs> right. You're like, oh God, black rights. <laughs> I was like, whoa, you know, I was at peace here. What's going on? And, but, you know, that was the only thing that freaked me out. But afterwards, I've just been at peace with it. You know, I was ready. If it was going to happen, then I was, I was good with that. That was so, me too. When I got really sick when I was in my twenties and, and, you know, they couldn't find what was wrong with me. So there was like no answers and no help available because they didn't know. Yep. So with that, you know, you, you come to that place where you can feel you're dying, you know, you're dying. You know, I was in the early stages of renal failure and then went into renal failure, had full circular it was not a plain wow. situation but um if you know when when that when that's happening and then it, when you and you, you get through it like i didn't have a near death experience but i had a long preparation of like <laughs> knowing i was going to die you yeah. know it was like so you were preparing yourself yeah so i and i got to a place that I was just okay with it. I was totally okay with it. And, and literally, um, if I wouldn't have gotten the help I did, when I did, they, the, the physician that actually was able to treat me, he told me I literally probably would have been dead in under 10 days. Wow. So Brian, Not Brian, fixable, I, like they couldn't have fixed me after that 10 day window. Right. It would have been too far and, gone. Go ahead, Rob. Oh, uh, okay. Um, with what Trina was saying, how she was preparing and stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, now you had your heart attack, and I'm trying to put all this stuff together. And um, so, so say you 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 died on the table, whatever. You hit the heart attack, and you don't remember everything. Everything's peaceful, and you're like calm, and all that, right? Yeah. Um, would it be possible? Now, this is this is kind of almost a question for Trina too. So now, listen to this. So if you did die and you got a message from the other side and all this stuff happened, like all these other people, mm -hmm. you think you suppress that memory? Oh, very possible. With the message in your head yet. Very and possible. Maybe that, and that's why you're here today doing this show. Who knows? Maybe that's what your point yeah. was. The, the, the thing was. 
Yeah. You think so, Trina? I think it's very possible. And whatever happened to Brian when he died, his mm-hmm. his his casual body that records everything and that's connected to the Akashic records from my understanding, that part of him records everything. So that memory is in his mind, even though he has no conscious awareness of it, his subconscious mind has complete 100% accurate detailed memories of the event. Because the, you know, even after the body dies, the, the mind will keep going for a while. Yeah. (laughs) <laughs> it's still sparking energy. They've done tests and well, so. you're going, you're dropping your flesh and you're just fully merging into the energetic part of you. The energetic part of you is with you in the flesh and it's with you when you drop your flesh and it records everything and in between lifetimes and prior to your lifetime. So within this field, you can find information of pre-birth before mm-hmm. you came into the lifetime. You can go back further in lifetimes and you can also like, you can, you can even go in the future. So you, you can go in all happening time. simultaneously. You can, it's, it's up to the power of your imagination. If you can hmm. think it, you can be there. That's, you know, to me, that's almost like maybe what, that's oh. what time traveling is. That's like, you know, that's the Mayans talked about Shab- Shabala and, they were going to the underworld. They called it to the underworld, but in actuality, what they were doing was going into these portals. And to them, Shamba was the center of the Milky Way galaxy. So yeah. their underworld was going to the center of the Milky Way galaxy. And actually, uh, maybe that's how space travel is <laughs> the way to do it. Totally. I, you know, I, I, that could totally be because, you know, s- space travel, when you're talking about space travel, um, but you, your time is different. Yeah. So maybe we literally can't get there through rockets, but through the mind and with it's, collective thought where we would actually ascend through the other side. Absolutely. Maybe that's how the new earth comes to be. We, we literally do split off, you know, the weak minded yeah. stay here and we're through well, the portal. <laughs> and that's a, that's a whole show a show in itself can you yeah. you know if you, you ever do the the research on on rocket travel and stuff and going places if you just thought about how big of a rocket you would have to have and how many months you'd have to travel and how much food and water you'd have to take with you and then not just that but the fuel to get there and then get back Nope. I mean, you would have to have a rocket the size of. It's not uh, possible you know. without wormholes or portals. Well, yeah, exactly. You'd be traveling sure. for years and years, and then you'd be up there in space where there, you know your body would deteriorate, and then you, literally your only thing left would be your consciousness, and then your brain would be working, but the the rest no. of you would be shot. I mean, I've been there in my mind. Hmm. Yeah, and I was going to say that the the guys that just went up for the longest time, they came back and they all had mental problems. And um, they took two identical twins and they put one astronaut up in space for, what was it, 90 days? And he came back and his genetics had changed. Yep. Mm. Yeah. So it definitely uh, has profound effects on the physical body. That's why I think um, the ultimate way for space travel would be that way through consciousness. And I think... uh, you know, I think this might be why they have the push for the artificial intelligence, because they know that's the only way truly that they can actually take physical beings into space is through an artificial body, because ours can't do it. Oh, and speaking of, since you said that, let me tell you, folks, I've been doing a lot of that meditating and focusing on repairing the DNA and stuff. I think we're on to something here. I'm telling you, like, I'm feeling the effects. Yeah. <laughs> so. Go in and start working I've on it. Seen, folks. I've seen people do that, Brian, in these trance states. I've I've seen them do modifications through their genetics, and yes, you could you could see. It the helped evidence. a lot with my pain. Absolutely, absolutely. You can, you know, under hypnosis, you can literally you can shut off pain. So, like, you can have somebody who's hypnotized, and you can put a knife through their hand, and they can't feel it. So, That's- you know, this is how powerful your mind is. So, like I said, I believe, believe. <laughs> I'm a believer. I've been shown the light. Yes, <laughs> you can be it, especially when you're in these higher levels of your mind. Literally, the more 
you trust your own wisdom and you trust your own self to show you what you need to see and go where you need to be and trust yourself. And this is, you know, this is the key to all of it. They've always taught us to, to be afraid. We need a savior. We need somebody to save us, worship, and we need doctors to heal us. And we need police officers to keep us safe. And, you know, we've always been taught, you know, we need all these things to stay safe because we can't do it on ourselves. That's mm -hmm. where the trap is. Take we your to, power back. Yeah, we yes. are the most powerful things, the most beautiful creations. And, and we need to start to really come together and embrace that beauty of oneness being expressed through all the beautiful diversity that we see. Absolutely. And as an hour had passed and come and gone, that was some beautiful words. Thank you. Yeah, but, so we've got to give Robert V. We've got to give Robert V. A, a, a final thought. Though. Well, I, I I would just say that was really nice and that and was beautiful. You're, you're, you're you're right. Don't feed the fear. You know, go with that instead because we're powerful and and they're feeding us with fear to think we're small. Yeah, we're the, we're the many. They're the few. Don't let a few people control the many. You know, yeah. so yeah. there you go. Man, it's Be been an awesome show as I knew it would be. <laughs> such a yes. pleasure to be with you robert so thank you oh uh, well it was great it was a pleasure and, and brian you know no pun intended <laughs> <laughs> well thank you both like i said i i like i knew the the combination would be good and we're going to do more of these too so and like i said tomorrow night training i'll be back for higher minds and then monday as well so y'all try to tune in for that Folks, go out Hi to everyone in chat. Much love to yeah. you all. Bye-bye. Everybody, go out there, spread some love. Be kind. Show some unconditional love and just say hi. And, you know, call your mom. Call your brother. Call your sister. Yeah. But be the frequency you want to see. Until tomorrow, I love you all. Have a wonderful night. Good night.